Hello and welcome to all the curious minds out there. This is Legends Unearthed, where we peel back the layers of the unknown. In today's episode, we're setting sail into the intriguing waters of the Lemuria legend. It's a story that dances on the edges of science and mythology, inviting us to ponder the mysteries of our world. Have you ever considered the possibility of entire continents hiding beneath the pages of history? Join us as we explore this captivating enigma. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this adventure with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling discoveries. And we are eager to hear your thoughts. What's your take on Lemuria? Drop your theories in the comments below, and let's unravel this mystery together. Imagine stepping back into the world of 19th century science, where mysteries lurked in every unexplored corner of the natural world. It was during this era of discovery that the legend of Lemuria first sprouted its roots. Picture British zoologist Philip Lutley Sclater in 1864, poring over maps and animal distributions. He stumbled upon a zoological conundrum. Lemurs, those peculiar and captivating creatures, were abundant in Madagascar and India, yet conspicuously absent in regions in between. Why were these animals clustered so distinctly across vast oceans? This puzzle led Sclater to propose an audacious theory— the existence of a now-lost continent named Lemuria. He envisioned this massive land bridging Madagascar and India, a cradle of life that had fractured and sunk, leaving fragments like Madagascar and the Mascarene Islands as clues to its grandeur. It was an idea as imaginative as it was bold, conjured up in an era when the now-accepted theory of continental drift was still a distant thought. Interestingly, Sclater wasn't alone in this line of thinking. About two decades earlier, French naturalist Étienne Geoffroy Saint-Hilaire had toyed with a similar idea, though he stopped short of giving it a name. But it was Sclater who boldly stepped forward, christening his hypothesis Lemuria. The tale takes another turn with German biologist Ernst Haeckel, a staunch supporter of Darwin's theory of evolution. In 1870, Haeckel suggested an even more striking role for Lemuria as the possible cradle of humanity itself. This radical idea stemmed from a gap in the fossil record and the elusive search for the missing links in human evolution. Haeckel theorized that Lemuria could have been the stage for early human migration, a hypothesis that, while speculative, ignited the scientific and public imagination alike. Yet, as the wheels of science turned, new discoveries in geology and evolutionary biology began to overshadow the need for a land bridge like Lemuria. By the 1960s, with the rise of plate tectonics and continental drift theories, the once plausible Lemuria quietly receded into the realm of scientific folklore. It's a vivid reminder of how our understanding evolves, often transforming today's certainties into tomorrow's myths. As the 19th century's scientific fascination began to wane, the story of Lemuria ventured into uncharted waters, sailing from empirical shores into the mystical realms of the occult. This transformation was ignited by the enigmatic Helena Blavatsky, a pivotal figure and co-founder of the Theosophical Society. This society, a cornerstone of esoteric tradition, was not just another new religious movement, it was a fusion of Eastern and Western philosophies, seeking to unearth deeper spiritual truths. Blavatsky's vision reimagined Lemuria, elevating it from a hypothetical landmass to a crucial chapter in her intricate tapestry of human evolution. In her expansive narrative, Lemuria was more than a bridge between continents. It was the cradle of the third root race. This concept, pivotal in theosophical teachings, represents a key phase in a series of seven evolutionary stages of humanity, as envisioned by Blavatsky. The inhabitants of Lemuria, according to Blavatsky's lore, were not mere mortals but colossal beings embodying profound spiritual and physical power. Standing fifteen feet tall, these hermaphroditic giants 
endowed with psychic abilities and a fabled third eye, lived in an era where spirituality and physicality converged in ways we can hardly fathom today. They were said to coexist with dinosaurs, symbolizing a time when spiritual and physical realms were in harmony. Blavatsky's narrative, however, didn't shy away from the theme of downfall. She portrayed Lemuria's demise as a reflection of the cyclical nature of civilizations, a concept echoed in numerous historical and mythological accounts. This fall from grace was a poignant reminder of the impermanence of even the most spiritually advanced societies. The Theosophical Society, under Blavatsky's guidance, went further, with figures like William Scott Eliot and Charles Webster Leadbeater adding their own unique insights. Scott Eliot's The Lost Lemuria explored the continent's vastness and intricacies of its society and culture, while Leadbeater, through his claimed clairvoyant abilities, delved deep into the spiritual and evolutionary aspects of Lemurian life. In this rich tapestry of theosophical teachings, Lemuria transcended its geographical confines, becoming a beacon of an enlightened era. It was a melting pot of diverse spiritual traditions, a place where Eastern mysticism met Western esoteric thought, crafting a unique interpretation of human history. This mystical rendition of Lemuria reached beyond the inner circles of secret societies, igniting the imaginations of authors, artists, and intellectuals. It influenced a surge in literature and art, marked by themes of lost civilizations and esoteric wisdom. This portrayal resonated in the public consciousness, embedding itself in various forms of media and becoming a staple in the world of occult and esoteric lore. From the visionary mind of Helena Blavatsky, Lemuria evolved beyond its scientific beginnings, morphing into a key element of a complex spiritual and mystical narrative. Its influence, perpetuated through the teachings and ideas of the Theosophical Society, left an indelible mark on a wide array of cultural and esoteric traditions. The story of Lemuria, rich in its layers and meanings, found a resonant chord in diverse cultural landscapes, shaping and being shaped by national narratives and historical sentiments. In the fabric of Tamil nationalism in India and the tapestry of Australian colonial culture, Lemuria took on new, significant dimensions. In the heart of India, the legend of Lemuria morphed into a symbol of cultural pride for Tamil nationalism. Here, it aligned with Kumari Kandam, a legendary sunken landmass revered in ancient Tamil literature as the birthplace of their civilization. The narrative of Kumari Kandam, steeped in historical and literary texts, speaks of a grand land, home to the early Tamil literary academies known as the Sangams, now lost to the sea. This story of a submerged ancestral land forms a cornerstone of Tamil historical identity, tracing back to the first millennium CE. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the rekindling of the Kumari Kandam legend echoed deeply within Tamil scholarly and nationalist circles. They mourned the loss of vast territories and invaluable literary treasures, fueling a sense of nostalgia and cultural identity. Intriguingly, Sclater's 19th century scientific proposition of Lemuria intertwined with the Tamil narrative, offering a sense of validation to their historical and cultural lore. Tamil nationalists saw Lemuria as a scientific testament to their ancient sunken homeland, believed to have once connected Madagascar, India, and Australia. Concurrently, the Lemuria legend wove its way into the fabric of Australian colonial culture during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Fueled by Blavatsky's theosophical visions and a societal fascination with lost races and ancient civilizations, Lemuria ignited the Australian imagination. Blavatsky's depiction of Lemurians, including their hypothesized links to Aboriginal Australians, added a layer of mystique to the colonial perspective on indigenous history. In Australia, Lemuria became a metaphorical lens through which the colonial society viewed its own identity struggles and the indigenous history. 
The narrative of Lemuria in Australian literature and thought reflected the complexities of colonial identity, juxtaposing the settlers' quest for self-definition against the rich backdrop of indigenous culture and lore. In these varied cultural contexts, the myth of Lemuria became a canvas for Tamil nationalists to project their longing for a historical golden age, while in Australian colonial culture it mirrored the introspective search for identity amidst the convolutions of colonial history. In the colorful world of popular culture, the legend of Lemuria has flourished, evolving from a scientific hypothesis to a beacon of inspiration and wonder. Its enchanting allure has seeped into the realms of literature, film, comics, and television, transforming it into a symbol of mystical realms and long-lost civilizations. In the realm of literature, Lemuria has soared beyond the boundaries of science, venturing into the realms of fantasy and adventure. Take, for example, the Thongor series by Lynn Carter, where Lemuria is reborn as a land shrouded in mystery and thrill. These stories paint the continent as a forgotten world, brimming with ancient cultures and legendary creatures. Lemuria here is not just a place on the map. It's a vibrant canvas for stories of wonder and exploration, capturing the hearts of readers with its blend of mystery and the unknown. The flexible nature of the Lemuria myth has found a fitting home in the diverse universe of comics. In the world of Marvel Comics, Lemuria is brought to life in two intriguing versions. One as an underwater kingdom rivaling Atlantis, and another as a subterranean haven for the Deviants, foes of the Eternals. These interpretations in the comics landscape highlight the versatility of Lemuria, integrating seamlessly into the intricate mythologies and backstories of the comic book realm. On the big screen and television, Lemuria captivates audiences as a mystical vanished continent housing advanced ancient societies. These visual adaptations focus on Lemuria's mysterious and esoteric qualities, spinning tales that are rich in intrigue and steeped in ancient mystique. The essence of Lemuria even permeates the works of contemporary literary figures like Thomas Pinchon. In novels such as Vineland and Inherent Vice, Pinchon intertwines Lemurian motifs, creating narratives that delve into mystical and esoteric traditions. His writing often reflects the human fascination with New Age concepts and our collective quest to find deeper meanings in the stories of lost worlds like Lemuria. To sum up, the legend of Lemuria, once a scientific pursuit, has blossomed into a dynamic and captivating theme in the world of popular culture. It stands not just as a fabled lost continent, but as a symbol of our innate longing for mysterious origins and hidden wisdom, constantly evolving to inspire the imaginations of writers, artists, and storytellers across various media platforms. Venturing into the realm of contemporary science, the once compelling theory of Lemuria has receded into the background, overshadowed by more recent geological discoveries. The advancements in plate tectonics and continental drift theories have reshaped our understanding of the Earth's geography, making the notion of a lost landmass like Lemuria an intriguing but obsolete hypothesis. The advent of plate tectonics theory in the 1960s marked a seismic shift in geology. This groundbreaking concept explains the movements of the Earth's lithospheric plates atop the more pliable asthenosphere. It clarifies the mysteries behind continental drift, earthquakes, and volcanic activity, tracing these phenomena to the shifting tectonic plates. This scientific development has effectively displaced the need for hypothetical land bridges like Lemuria to account for geological and biological patterns. Our journey to this advanced understanding began with Alfred Wegener's pioneering hypothesis of continental drift in 1912. Wegener observed that continents such as South America and Africa seemed to fit together like pieces of a giant puzzle. He bolstered his theory with evidence of similar fossils found across these continents. Initially met with skepticism, Wegener's ideas gradually laid the foundation for the comprehensive theory of plate tectonics, 
offering a more nuanced understanding of our planet's ever-changing face. Looking ahead, modern science provides intriguing projections about the future of our planet. Simulations forecast that the continents will eventually merge into a new supercontinent, tentatively named Pangaea Proxima, over the next 250 million years. This prediction underscores the dynamic, ever-evolving nature of Earth's geography, driven by the relentless forces of plate tectonics. In recent years, geological studies, particularly in regions like Mauritius, have unveiled evidence of ancient microcontinents. Discoveries of ancient zircons dating back billions of years hint at the existence of older, now-submerged landmasses. Although these findings are compelling, they don't specifically corroborate the 19th-century notion of Lemuria. Instead, they provide a window into the intricate processes of continental breakup and the formation of microcontinents over eons. In summary, while the concept of Lemuria once stood as a viable explanation for certain geological and biological puzzles, it has been eclipsed by the detailed and comprehensive explanations offered by modern geological science. The narrative of Lemuria, transitioning from a scientific theory to a cultural myth, showcases the ever-changing landscape of human knowledge and our quest to understand the world around us. Thank you for venturing with us through the enigmatic saga of Lemuria. From its inception in the realm of science to its evolution into a mythic and cultural phenomenon, the story of Lemuria, despite being debunked by modern science, remains a poignant emblem of lost wisdom and ancient enigmas, capturing our everlasting intrigue with the idea of forgotten civilizations. It is a vivid reminder of the boundless power of human curiosity and the magic of imagination. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe, joining us as we continue to unravel more of the world's most intriguing legends. What are your thoughts on Lemuria? Could there be a kernel of truth in this age-old legend? We'd love to hear your perspectives in the comments below. Until we meet again, stay curious and keep diving into the fascinating mysteries that our world has to offer.